As amateur golfers, if we're looking to improve our golf game, we will usually turn to the likes of YouTube to watch tutorials, we might even read textbooks still, or we usually go for lessons with our local club pros. But with the advances in technology, and in particular online coaching platforms, we now have access to golf coaches from all across the world. And in particular, we can access the services of some of the top, top golf pros the world has to offer. Last year, I decided to send my swing across to Jonathan Yarwood to see if he could give me some tips and pointers and hopefully help improve my golf game. Now, if you're not familiar with who Jonathan Yarwood is, he was the 2005 US Open champion Michael Campbell's coach at the time, and he has over 25 years experience as an elite level coach. Now, when I sent this swing across, I had been making a few changes based on videos I'd watched on YouTube, and one of the big things I was doing was trying to rotate my upper body a lot more. But as you'll see in this particular lesson from Jonathan, it looks like I was turning my body far too much, and actually it was having a detrimental impact on my golf swing. So hopefully you enjoy watching this tutorial that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share it in full so you'll be able to look at it from the very beginning until the end. I've not edited it, I've not removed anything. Everything that you see in this video is exactly as Jonathan sent me. But as you'll see, it is packed with a lot of useful information. And even if you're not necessarily struggling with the same things I was struggling with, you'll be able to see just how much useful information Jonathan has packed in to these few minutes. Hey Andrew, thanks so much for sending me a swing. Uh, looks a nice day there, even though it's a little bit cold and windy. Um, let's have a look at the, the, the kind of big picture of your swing, shall we? Um, you know, you stood nicely on the right here, um, but you can see as you go back, you know, the club's getting way behind you, and way underplaned at this point here. Obviously, you're focusing on the, the big turn, as you said. Um, I think you're kind of barking up the wrong tree a little bit there, and I'll show you why. Um, the club's going around behind you, and as you add that big turn into it, now the arms go really behind you. And then they start to lift to the top. So now as you get into this kind of overturned position, I'll probably be able to demonstrate that better from the from the front here. Um, you know, you can see, you know, you kind of overturn your whole body, really. And the club goes around behind you, as we just saw. I mean, you've got enough turn for five people there. I mean, that's about 120 degrees a turn. This is about 55 to 60 degrees a turn. And that left leg's very active. And there's... We found there's no real benefit to that amount of turn. It kind of, you know, you have to get yourself back out of that position, basically. And the downswing only takes 0.23 of a second. And if you've rotated 120 degrees and you want to get 45 degrees open with your chest, well, you've got to go 165 degrees in 0.23 of a second to, to get that. And that's pretty much impossible. And that's why we don't turn so much on the way back. So it, as a result of that overturn and the arms kind of getting behind you, now that everything unwinds together and you can see you make a lovely transition you know you, you stamp your left foot back down you put some really good energy in the ground um but the the the, the bad news is that as you said in your um, email it kind of comes over over the top as a result gets real steep doesn't it which is you know kind of what you're trying to eliminate to some extent you can see that club's perpendicular to the ground and um, and as soon as you do that you have to early extend so you know that's a symptom of the face being shut and the club being steep the early extension is just a symptom of that. So, you know, that's the, as we call it, that's the, the effect, not the cause. The cause is the fact that the, the club has gone around you so much this way. And then it's kind of gone, you know, into this kind of over the top kind of deal on the way down. So, um, you know, all if you look at how much turn, uh, you know, highly effective swings have, you know, this is Billy Horschel at the top. I mean, he's got 89.2 degrees of shoulder turn. He's got very little hip turn, just around about 45, knees moved a little, you know, so that's what we look for. And that gets the arms kind of up in front and what we call structured in front of the player. So, you know, you can see how the, you know, the club works outside the hands at the start of the swing here, it never goes inside the hands. And that's kind of the first thing you've got to improve. You've got to keep that club outside your hands and get it hinged upwards. So the club is now balanced. It never goes beneath that right shoulder, that right forearm. Uh, when you film it on your phone, you should never see it below your right forearm. Yours is considerably underneath your right forearm. So I'd, I'd work on just trying to slow your turn down, keep your left knee stiller and hinge that club up. Get it up in balance. Um, and so then the, the arms of the club get more up in front of you. And you can see the shape of the plane of the swing here. Look, it kind of goes up like this and then down like this, right? Yours is going the opposite. Yours is going this way to this way because there's so many moving parts. 
you know, you're a big, strong kid. I think if you just said to yourself, right, I'm going to feel literally like I keep my knees still. I'm going to keep the club outside my hands and hinge it up and then make a little loop with it, almost feeling like a, a hingy, armsy loop with very little body motion. I think what you'll find is um, that you'll end up with a swing that's that's got the right amount of, of body motion and arm swing together. I think you'll, you'll, your swing has become so, obviously because you're focused on it to some extent, but it's become so... Um, body turn orientated that the, the the arms are kind of you know they're in no man's land and if you just focus on your arms moving a little better and the club moving a bit better I think then the the, the body will tame itself a little bit and everything will blend together a little nicer so we could watch a hundred swings here they all do the same thing club outside the hands and hinging upwards so the club is balanced so hands are in the middle of the chest club is balanced it's on its end um, and then from there, the body will gently kick in. It's not going to go crazy. It'll gently kick in. And then you can see the shallowness. So again, it's going up to shallow, isn't it? It's not working in that uh, shape that yours is. Um, if we bring in even a driver swing, you're going to see not a huge amount of turn uh, with a driver swing. Let me just find, uh, let's have a look at someone like Tiger Woods uh, driver swing here. And then we'll look at your the amount of turn you've got. So if you look at I'm just, let me just get you to the top. I think you didn't quite edit this one. So there's no correlation between that amount of moving parts and turn with efficiency or, or creating any speed. You just have to get yourself out of jail when, you, when you're that overturned. So let me just uh, click off that and get this one moving on the left here. So let's look at uh, Tiger with the driver. And obviously you turn a little more with the driver, but you're still going to see you know, a lot calmer look about it than you've got. So there's Tiger kind of coming to the top left knee is stationary you know the shoulders have moved less you can see how if i bring him back look in with a driver the club is hinged upwards it's outside his hands at the start it's hinged up we call it getting on its end and then you can see from there look not a huge amount of turn left knee is really still and then he makes this kind of little shallow move from there and again the bar the arms of the body are blending together you know, your, your arms are fighting to, to, to be heard, really, to some extent. Um, so, you know, as I say, what I'd, what I'd work on is, is really, you could hit some shots with your feet together to calm your body down a little bit. I guarantee you hit it the same distance as you do with your feet apart. I can pretty much guarantee that. And what you've got to feel, and what you could do, is put a little alignment stick in the ground, kind of like this, and then try and make some swings, not full swings, but make some swings where you're not hitting the ball, where you kind of go over it on the way back and then under it on the way down and try and get that feeling of that kind of loop of, of your of the club, getting the club up in balance, like a Matt Wolf kind of swing would be a really good way for you to go with your feet together, just getting this kind of look. And as soon as you get that going, then just widen your feet and keep your left knee still. And as I say, then your body and your arms will then gel themselves together. So, you know, as I say, you've got to get your arms swinging, the club doing a little more and, and getting in much better balance early on. So keep that thing outside your hands. You can put a little ball behind the, the ball you're hitting, knock it with the back of the club and just hinge the club upwards. Get that checkpoint of the club being above your right forearm, hands in the middle of the chest halfway back. And then just start to artificially feel that kind of loop, this kind of D shape. Uh, 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 as I say, keeping your body and your left knee a ton stiller. So there you go, as you can see, Jonathan managed to pack in a huge amount of information into a very small amount of time. And there's a lot there that you can then take to help build on. The problem is, as with most things in life, I received this analysis and then I didn't really do much with it because I was just too busy or forgot about it. So this year I have decided to properly invest time and effort into my golf game and hopefully cure my swing woes. To do this, I have enlisted the help of PGA professional Michael Farrier Twist based down in England, but I'm going to be using the online platform Skillist to basically go through his online coaching program. So we're going to build my swing up from the very beginning because I have years worth of mistakes that need to be corrected. If you're interested in following along with this journey, I'll be blogging on it as part of my Journey to Scratch series. So you can read those posts or view the videos on this channel or on my blog at andysgolfblog.co.uk. If you don't want to miss them, make sure that you subscribe to this channel because I'll be sharing them every couple of weeks. And whilst it won't be an analysis of your particular golf swing, hopefully you'll find these videos to be insightful and you might be able to learn a thing or two in watching them. I've also got loads of other videos on my YouTube channel, so feel free to check them out. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a like. Now, why not check out these videos here that I think might be of interest to you?